Yeah, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, I've got uh, quite a few, or well, a number of business trips coming up, which is going to take me away from the bench for quite some time. So what I wanted to do was just do a quick um, video on this, just to sort of, not so much wrap things up, but I know when I get back that I'm, I've got a few other projects I want to get on with. Um, so I just want to sort of talk about this one, um, and, and we'll essentially go from there. So what I've done since the last video, uh, I was playing around with the drive level from the SI5351 uh, going into the mixer and I decided that uh, it didn't need um, a full 8 milliamps set up on the SI5351 so right or wrong and I know this is unconventional and I know it, it causes issues but um, I'm just playing around here um, I've put a, um, a 200 ohm uh, trim pot on the output of the SI5351 so that centre leg there is is coming off uh, clock zero uh, the right hand leg there is on um, on earth and then I'm just sort of uh, with the sweeper arm there feeding that into the uh, feeding that into the mixer and I've, de I've decided that the best signal for both uh, transmit and receive is around um, 900 millivolts peak to peak um, as a drive level um, which is quite a bit less than the 1.414 volts peak to peak at one stage. So, um, like I say, that's that's yeah, sort of where things have sort of um, settled on in terms of drive level. Um, I don't know what that particular mixer should be, but just through trial and error, that's what it's turned out to be. So, hmm, for for what it's worth. Um, so at the moment, I've got the the. The RF from a receive point of view hasn't changed, we've still got the receive antenna amplifier there feeding into the mixer, uh, we've still got the audio amplifier through to the speaker. Um, what I have now got um, is a transmit side, uh, albeit low power. Um, we have our microphone coming in, and I'll just turn it on before it's got that currently sitting next to the, uh, the MP3 player playing podcast, uh, into a, uh, a small uh, 2N3904 based antenna amplifier. Uh, that is an electric uh, microphone, so we do need to have some biasing there, which is that transistor, and we'll have a look at that circuit in a sec. Uh, and then being transmitted, we'll use the yellow, feeding into that same pick-off point um, for the uh, audio coming out. And then on the RF side, uh, just purely in parallel here, uh, some RF coming off, going into a simple, again, uh, 2N3904 uh, RF amplifier, which we'll look at again. Um, that amplifier comes from a radio we, we made back in 2018. Uh, it was lying in the junk box, so I just sort of grabbed it out to use it in this particular uh, radio here just to, to test out the low power transmit. So before I go into the circuits, um, I've uh, got the, uh, the 40 meter um, filter in, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just have a quick listen to um, quick listen to the transmit, and then I'll go through and have a look at. Um, have a look at uh, the circuits. So, so that's like I said, that's just transmitting low power there. And interesting enough, that's on lower sideband, and I'll just flick across to upper. So it's now upper sideband. And lower sideband, which is what we totally expect because this is a double sideband uh, radio, so it um, obviously it's transmitting on both bands. So irrespective of this, uh, it'll come through. So if you're transmitting up on the uh, the 20 meter band where it's upper sideband, you you know you'd still be receivable um, and be able to receive at the same time. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just turn that down there. Um, I will turn off the MP3 player because it's a little bit annoying. And uh, we'll have a quick look at that, uh, those circuits. Let me just dig it out. Right, enough said. Okay, let's just uh, move the camera down and see if we can go through uh, a little bit of this. Um, I'm not going to go through the uh, the circuits in any great detail, just more talk of the highlights. Um, let me just put some glasses on so I can see. And so like I say, this is the uh, the microphone amplifier. It's just based on a, uh, a 2N3904. Um, nothing flash there, um, fully bypassing the emitter resistor and then just using a trim pot there to adjust the drive level to make the um, um, the, the output signal sound nice and clean and not overdriving 
uh, the mixer anyway. Um, the maths here is exactly the same. Um, I will say though in this particular case with that 10 milliamps going through there I have elected to uh, look at the voltage drop or take into consideration more to the point uh, the voltage drop across that 100 ohm uh, resistor there uh, at 10 milliamps is obviously a volt um, so uh, I've, I've taken that into consideration so all through the uh, the maths if you look at it there you'll see that 10 milliamps minus 100 uh, down here again 10 milliamps times 100 just to uh, try and make the, uh, the maths um, as accurate as possible well within reason of course um, like I say in this particular video I, I don't intend to go through um, I'll put all of these um, circuits up on the blog as I normally do um, so that should be yes it should be there should be a full setup there including um, all the code uh, for the Arduino um, I'll just say that in this particular case I did set it for, for uh, 10 milliamps um, straight out of the spec sheet got the, the range for beta DC um, and funny old thing, uh, the values that came out, even taken into consideration 100 ohms, uh, is the same values, apart from this one here, so it was 3.3 before, as the uh, the antenna amplifier, uh, which was also biased for uh, for 10 milliamps. Um, yep, yeah, nothing spectacular there. Um, again, well, I shouldn't say again, but I did set the, uh, the collector to be roughly halfway uh, between that 11 volts, um, so that's what the uh, that is there. So uh, half of 12 minus 1 is 11, which comes out at 5.5, with a 4 of 550, or the nearest standard value 560 ohm resistor. For the uh, the coupling capacitors, um, for the input coupling capacitor, just elected to uh, try and set that to be um, for the this is the bypass one on the emitter, uh, a less than a tenth of RE at 300 ohms. Um, if you rearrange the formula for capacitive reactants to make uh, capacitance the subject, in other words, move that to the top of the line and then move this down to the bottom, we can uh, plug in our knowns and come out at 44.2 microfarads. Uh, and I just elected to use uh, 47 as the um, as a standard value uh, for that. What have we got here? Uh, coupling capacitors. Uh, what I initially started with for the uh, the input capacitor was uh, I wanted it to be less than 100 ohms at 300 uh, hertz. Um, that turned out to be 5.3 microfarads, um, which I just bumped that up to uh, to 10 microfarads. Uh, when I was playing around and looking at the spectrum, I, I decided that uh, it was a little bit too bassy, so I did away with that and went with another value which is um, I've seen quite a few times in little radios like this of 0.1 microfarads so 100 nanofarads uh, and that certainly um, reduced uh, a little bit of the lows and of course then allowed the highs to come through a little bit more so that's what's currently in the radio is a um, is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor uh, as the uh, the coupling between the electric microphone and the input of the of the transistor um, now being an electric microphone, so that's this little one here, uh, that uh, requires some biasing. Um, I don't know exactly what this particular device is, it's a junk box microphone, uh, but the spec sheets for those, um, from what I have seen, seem to be pretty well the same sort of value. So it's looking at um, half a milliamp um, at 2 volts to bias those. Uh, so again, we know what, just using Ohm's law, looking at what the voltage drop needs to be across uh, RM, that biasing resistor for it, um, at half a milliamps, and it comes out to be 18k ohms, so spot on um, a standard value there. So that's the um, that uh, resistor that um, that we had dropping and biasing that particular microphone. Now for the um, the the, the uh, that, that uh, very low power. Um, RF amplifier coming out of the the mixer. Um, like I say, this dates back to uh, to 2018. Um, I don't have a circuit for this one, um, but it, it is up on the blog. Uh, again, it was just 10 milliamps. Um, same sort of HFEs. Uh, interesting enough, I didn't redo the calculations on this. Um, this was for a 13.8 volt um, VCC. Uh, this radio is currently running on 12. Um, so that's not quite right there, but uh, for testing purposes, it's it's about right. Um, 
again, I'm not going to go through the maths here. I'll put this up on the blog uh, and people can go through it there. But you know, I do acknowledge that the maths is not correct based on the, um, the supply voltage that we have for the radio. Something that does come to mind, which I'll just have a quick chat about. Let me just rearrange this. Um, this particular radio, uh, when I originally built this style, it was um, heavily uh, influenced by um, by VK3YE's Beach 40. Um, and in that particular case, the input and the output of the mixer were directly parallel between transmit and receive. So you can see here, this is the, the RF coming in for uh, receive, obviously, and then for transmit, it's going out this side here. Um, there is no switch in here, no uh, relay that shears this one mixer between the two inputs, or the one input and the one output. And same down here for the microphone coming in and then our, our receive audio coming out. Um, and it does make a difference, um, as you'd expect, with RF on receive coming through here, uh, we've got some RF going through the mixer, and then we've got some RF going through here and being wasted um, uh, in, the, in the input circuit of that particular transistor. Even though the transistor's turned off, it's still being dropped across uh, parallel resistors and the like to earth. Um, and you can notice that when you desolder that uh, and remove it, then you, uh, you certainly get um, an increase in your receive um, audio. And same down here. Um, but again, yeah, that was the original design, um, had those in parallel, and that's what I elected to do here. But, you know, I think if you're trying to eke out the maximum amount of gain across your whole radio, then it would make sense to um, have a small relay here just to switch that. But for simplicity, with just the one switch over here for transmit and receive, um, you know, this radio at the moment has no relays at all. Um, the only what would traditionally be a relay is now just been done by a, um, a double pole, double throw switch. Right, um, what else did I want to point out before I um, settle off? Uh, no, I think that's about all actually. So, um, like I say, um, I've got a few business trips coming up now, which is going to take me away for, for a period. And when I get back, um, I've got some other things that I do want to get on with. But um, yeah, fun little project, and you know, it's a it's a good stepping stone to uh, getting into um, single sideband. You know, it doesn't take much to um, have two of these mixers here. Uh, one to drop our uh, incoming RF down to the IF frequency. Um, have the output of this would be now our IF. Uh, have that feeding through a crystal filter, and then on the other side have our product detector. Exactly the same thing again to drop it down to audio. So it, it doesn't take a lot to uh, to convert this. Um, clearly we'd need to have another amplifier there uh, for the second IFM um, but again you know, like I say it's it's, um, it's 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 not hard and, and provides a good stepping stone to uh, to do others anyway look I apologize this is a short video and uh, and is not too spicky in terms of um, oscilloscopes and the like but I just wanted to just do a f make a few little comments before I um, I disappear for a little while um, and I think that's all I wanted to say. So uh, cheers all, um, and uh, happy soldering and happy experimenting and happy homebrewing. Uh, it's all good fun. Okay, cheers all.